numbers just because you know the numbers aren't important. Uh, this is a really classic problem about a ballistic pendulum. So one, and they actually use these things. So one way to measure the speed of a bullet is to take a bullet and it comes out of the gun and then it collides with let's say a block on, on some strings. So this is before the collision. Uh, let's call this MB and let's call this big M. And this is uh, V of the bullet when it shot out of the gun. After it collides, then we have next step is the bullets embedded in there, and this we'll call uh, V2. That's in the x direction. And then now it's a pendulum, and it's moving, so it swings up. So it goes like this. It's usually on two strings to prevent it from uh, rotating like that. And so the, the thing about that is that it's easier to measure. Um, this is going to be going slower after it collides, but still you can't measure the velocity. But you can record how high it goes. You can just be sitting by the side or have an angle measurement or something to determine how high it goes. So you're going to start with the mass of the bullet, the mass of the block, and you're going to record how high it goes, and or the angle. And from that, say, well, how fast was the bullet going when it was shot? So we want to find uh, VB in terms of mass of bullet, mass, mass of block, and the height, okay, without measuring the velocity. Okay, so let's break this into um, pieces. Okay, uh, in fact, let's work backwards because backwards is good. So, if I know that it collides and it swings up, can I find out how fast it was going down there? Yes, I can. So the first thing is, is this work energy or momentum principle? In this case, it's work energy because I don't care about the time, I have the height. So that says you should use work energy. So work is a change in energy. Okay, the next step. Well, what's my system? Um, I'm going to say my system is the bullet, oops, I can't spell, block, earth, all those together. Um, I'm not going to worry about the strings. So this means the next thing is what's the work? Well. Do I do gravity? Gravity is acting on that. Do I have to worry about that? No, you don't because that's an internal force in my system. It's an interaction between these and the earth and so it doesn't do any work on the system. It's part of the system. What about the strings? They're pulling on it this way. They do work. And the answer there is no because as the block's moving, the strings pull perpendicular to the direction it's moving. So right here there's delta R, and there's T, the tension, and so uh, T dot delta R is going to be zero. So they don't do any work. So the work done is zero. So I have change in kinetic plus change in gravitational potential. Okay. So uh, at part two, that's my final, what's the kinetic energy? It stops. When it gets to the highest point, it stops. So I'm going to say zero equals K2 minus K1 plus U2 minus U1. So let's just put in the things that we know. Let's call this Y equals 0. So then I have 0 equals K2 is 0 minus K1, 1 half M plus MB V2 squared. I, love, I didn't leave enough room for planning on my part. Okay, well, let's, I'll put it down next. U2 is going to be M, I'm sorry, MB plus M GH, and then U1 is 0. So I can solve this. I get 1 half M plus MB V2 squared equals... MB 
plus M G H. Uh, these cancel. So I get V2 squared equals 2GH. I'll just leave it right there. I won't, I won't, I'll just leave it like that. So some important things to note here. Uh, first, it doesn't depend on the mass. Uh, it doesn't depend on the length of the string or anything like that. Because this is the same thing as just simple throwing something up in the air. Uh, we don't have any other types of internal energy. It's, it's pretty straightforward. Okay. Okay, let me write that over here. So V2 equals 2GH, V2 squared. Okay, now I'm going to erase what I did so I can do something else. Okay, now I'm going backwards again. So now I know that velocity. Now I can find, uh, I can look at the collision between this bullet and the block. So the question is, should I use work energy or momentum principle? This is a little tougher. So do I know the distance that these two interact? No, I don't. Do I know the time they interact? No. So what do you do? Well, I know that if I look at the bullet and the block, they exert the same force for the same amount of time. So in that case, it's, it is time. The time is the same. So I can say, uh, if this is my system, then I can say delta P total equals F net to the whole thing. Um, gravity's pulling down in it, but the, the string's pulling up, so it's going to be a uh, zero vector. So in the x direction, I can say uh, P1 x, the total initial momentum, I'm sorry, P2 x, the total initial momentum, minus P1x is 0. So finally, the final momentum is going to be mass of the bullet plus mass of the block times V2, that way, minus the initial momentum, mass of the bullet, velocity of the bullet, equals 0. So I can solve for the velocity of the bullet. It's going to be mass of the bullet plus mass of block V2 over mass of the bullet. And then V2, I know, I know that value right there. So velocity of the bullet is going to be mass of the bullet plus mass of the block times the square root of 2GH, all of that over mass of the bullet. Does this have the correct units? Well, I have kilograms divided by kilograms, and this is um, meters per second squared times meter, meter squared per second squared, take the square root. So it does give me units of velocity, so that's good. And so you can see that the higher the block goes up indicates a faster moving block, bullet. And you can put in some numbers here, but I'm not going to do that. Okay, one more question. What about the increase in thermal energy of the block? Does the block increase in thermal energy? Well, let's just look. So, look at this and this. So before, what's the energy of the system? Well, this is moving, so there's kinetic energy, and this doesn't. Afterwards, they're both moving. So, do they have kinetic, same kinetic energy before and after? So let's call this uh, K1. 1 half m bullet v bullet squared. And then k2, it's going to be 1 half m bullet plus m v2 squared. Are they the same? Well, I can put in the velocity of the bullet in terms of v2. 1 half, the mass of bullet cancels, so I get mv plus m divided by mv, and then I get vb squared, oh wait, I'm sorry, I skipped a step. Okay, let's just do it the long way. One half mb, and then put in vb squared, I'm going to get mb plus m squared 2gh over mb squared. Uh, this cancels. So I get that. Okay, so Oh, 
but that's V. I could get this in terms of the same thing too. Let me just go ahead and put that so they're they're similar. So uh, right here, I get one half m b plus m, and then this squared is two g h. So are they the same? No, they're not. This one, the kinetic energy is going to be. Uh, we're dividing by a small number, so it's going to be different than this, see? Oh, this should be squared. Oh, no, it's not. This is mb plus m, and this is mb plus m squared over mb, so, so it is different. Okay, so they're not the same energy before and after, and in fact, you're going to have more kinetic energy before than after. Well, where does the other energy go? It has to go somewhere. In this case, it goes into what is called thermal energy. So delta E thermal is going to be the difference in this. So it's going to be K1 minus K2. Because really we're saying uh, delta E equals uh, delta K plus delta E thermal. So delta E thermal is going to be the opposite of uh, this. So I can take K1 minus K2, and that will give me my increase uh, in thermal energy. So, okay. Hopefully that helps.